dear students welcome to the second lecture on dairy plant design and layout in the first lecture i have discussed mainly about the location of the site and details design of a dairy plant especially different units required and their proper location and all other facilities today in this continuation in this lecture i will focus more on the dairy plant equipments and other utility services so initially i will talk little more about the building design particularly floors and walls then i am going to talk about the details of different equipments required and their sanitary design some of the aspects very very important and then i will talk some more details about some of the important utility services and different uh, details of such machineries so before starting a dairy plant some of the important permissions are required from different government agencies so here i we will briefly discuss about it number 1 is the electricity that is the state electricity board we need to take permission before starting the dairy plant establishment because this plant is going to consume heavy power requirement then we need to have the fssai license or registration as i told you earlier the food safety and standards authority of india that is working and implementing the food safety and standards act and this is the authority to give permission or give license and registration so that depends on the quantum of operation so if the operation volume is very less then we need to take only registration but if the quantum is more then we have to take the license number 3 is the effluent treatment plant so this is very very important so we need to take permission from the state pollution control board or sometime the national pollution control board according to industrial pollution act 1976 dairy industry is considered as a source of polluting water therefore waste water from dairy plant is discharged to effluent treatment plants where the majority of the pollutants are removed so we need to take clearance from the pollution control board before starting the dairy plant. so while constructing a dairy plant building the walls are very very important walls are normally built of concrete blocks and or brick masonry for the general building envelope if concrete block is used it should be treated to make it waterproof the wall finish and additional insulation depend on exposure a vapor barrier must be incorporated in an insulated wall or damage to the insulation will result ceramic tile of the correct grade that has been applied properly is a cost effective hard wearing surface for most sanitary work areas it requires careful installation so that there are no hollow openings behind the tiles many other durable surface covering such as fiberglass sheets are used where economy is required so these are some important points about the walls the ceramic tiles are a common option for proper hygienic maintenance and for easy cleaning washing etc so a dairy plant building a design and construction is very very important because we are going to handle the food product so hygienic uh, part is very very important so here briefly we will talk about the floors for the dairy plant floors are normally constructed over a concrete slab the poured reinforced base thickness will vary depending upon the load it should carry flooring finish varies with the location where it must be used for example the floor of a food processing plant where any contact with the food product or cleaning solutions occur should preferably be dairy or packing house brick floors should be sloped to avoid accumulation of puddles or water in any area the speed with which water will drain across a floor depends upon the roughness of the floor if the floor is in a multi story building it is important that an impermeable membrane be used so that water does not trip through the concrete so these are some of the very important points for the flooring of the dairy plant so as i have mentioned about the floor design 
so here you can see the different example in this picture different kind of uh, coating materials or other synthetic coverings or epoxy resins uh, so many different type of options are available for sanitary design or hygienic floor surfaces and coatings so now you will discuss about the equipments required for a small dairy plant as we have discussed earlier small medium and large dairy plant so here for better understanding we are going to discuss for a small dairy plant with a capacity up to 5000 liters per day but all the machineries and their size will increase if we have to establish a bigger dairy plant so in this case the equipments and their capacity i am going to mention that is can steaming block standard size or standard capacity can conveyor a standard capacity can washer with a standard capacity steam and water mixing battery standard capacity then cans that is can be aluminium or stainless steel at least 100 numbers owing balance it is 300 kg and 100 kg one each the dump tank that is 300 2000 liter capacity one in number then storage tank 5000 liter capacity two numbers and bulk milk cooler we need 2000 liter capacity one number in the previous one we have seen some of the basic facilities or equipments for a dairy plant or for milk processing now here we will see some of the specific equipments for processing of milk and milk products like milk transfer pump about 1000 liters per hour capacity then HTST pasteurizer that is the high temperature short time pasteurizer 1000 liters per hour capacity then cream separator 1000 liters per hour capacity plate chiller 1000 liters per hour capacity then homogenizer 1000 liters per hour then batch type pasteurizer that is sometime we call LTLT low temperature long time that is about 1000 liters capacity it can be electrically operated or steam operated then intermediate milk storage tank so we need at least 1000 liter capacity then packaging machine it can be single head or double head then butter churn for making butter with a capacity of at least 1000 liter then butter melting vat with a capacity of 1000 uh, sorry 100 liters here in continuation to the previous one some more machineries for milk product processing like ghee boiler 50 liter capacity ghee settling come storage tank 50 liter capacity ghee strainer of standard size ghee pouch filling machine standard size then sterilizer about 200 bottles per batch that is the capacity required then bottle filling and capping machine of standard capacity koa making vat of 50 liter capacity so these vats are steam operated as you know then paneer vat that is about 100 liter capacity then paneer pressing machine that is numerically numerically operated and then vacuum packaging machine one number here some more machineries especially some of the batch operations and many of the utility requirements like batch pasteurizer electrically operated 100 liter capacity then homogenizer 100 liter capacity per hour then aging vat 100 liter capacity then batch freezer that is 20 liter capacity maybe for ice cream making then walk-in cooler that is 3 meter into 3 meter into 3 meter size then deep freezer that is minus 18 to minus 20 degree celsius three numbers then fire extinguisher or fly killers as per requirements then insulated pipelines water line electric panel as per standard then baby boiler a small boiler about 500 kg steam production capacity per hour and a refrigeration unit that is about 10 ton capacity 
So these are some of the mostly utility services required for a small dairy plant with a capacity of 5000 liters of milk per day. Here in this picture we can see the sanitary design pertaining to the floor and equipments. You can see the durable floor designs and the proper equipment footings that is the equipments are designed in such a way there are proper height in the legs and option for cleaning easily. Here we can see again the sanitary design particularly the raised platforms for cleaning underneath. So most of the machineries which are installed in the dairy plant they are placed in such a way that there is a raised platform and below there is sufficient space for cleaning so that all hazards related to hygiene can be avoided. So some of the details of these machineries especially the pasteurization plant and all we are going to discuss separately when we talk about pasteurization. Similarly for other equipments we will discuss when we talk about their use or preparation of different products. So this is again in continuation to sanitary design for the dairy plant. We can see that transition rooms and wash stations which are uh, hygienically placed with proper flooring and walls and at the bottom we can see the traffic patterns and flows where there should be proper distance and space for movement of the working people. Here again we can see the hygienic or sanitary design in the dairy plant. You can see the poor and good panel installation. In the left side we can see the poor clearance and legs whereas in the right side we can see good clearance, legs and gable top. So this makes a lot of difference in the hygiene and sanitation of the plant. So we are discussing about the basic facilities and requirements for a small dairy plant with 5000 liter capacity per day. So it also requires a small quality control lab. The size of the labs can be about 10 feet into 15 feet which is sufficient to establish the basic minimum requirements for a quality control lab. The equipments required for such a small lab is like weighing balance, electric heater, pipette washer, dispensers, garber centrifuge, water bath, hot air oven, milko analyzer or milko tester, then incubator and other required glass wares, chemicals, plastic wares, etc. This is the basic minimum requirement for a small quality control lab for a small dairy plant. So far we have been focusing more on the basic dairy processing equipments. We have discussed some of the important equipments required and their capacity but details of the functioning of those equipments we will discuss later in their respective topics when we discuss about the processing of different products. Now here we are discussing some of the important utilities. So these utilities plays very important role for the dairy plant operation or product processing. So most important is the electricity which we are going to discuss here, then the water requirements, then steam requirements that is a boiler is required, then compressed air is required in different places and the cold storage or refrigeration. So here we need both refrigeration and freezer storage. These are some of the most important requirement for the dairy plant as the utility services. Now we will discuss about the selection of utility equipment. Like choice of equipment affects the space requirement. We should select the equipments properly. Then only we can properly allocate the space for them. The selection of equipment is important. Keeping in mind the present need and future expansion plan. So we must select the equipments keeping in mind the future expansion. For example, Increasing the capacity of a HTST pasteurizer may not require significant increase in floor space. So when we specify a space for HTST pasteurizer, we don't need much extra space for increasing the capacity. Whereas for other types of equipments, 
may need substantial space for increasing capacity such as spray dyer. So when we allocate a space for spray dyer, we must keep extra space for increasing the capacity. So here in continuation of selection of utility equipment, dairy processes involve several equipments of varied nature. This requires careful planning to decide their installation position in layout. So when we are making the layout that time itself we have to decide about this utility equipment so that they can be properly positioned in the layout. Working space and space in between the equipments has to be decided at planning stage so that sufficient space is available for processing operation. This we have discussed earlier also in the first part of this topic. Therefore, it is advisable to plan the requirements of equipments before the architect begins the work. So when a architect take up the work for designing the building, we must decide all these requirements of these different kind of equipments. Moreover, approximate floor loadings must be estimated as they affect the choice of construction and layout. So once we decide different kind of equipments to be installed based on that only floor loadings can be decided. It has a connection with the construction and layout of the dairy plan. In the utility requirements or utility services or machineries, most important requirement is the electricity. So without electricity, no machines can operate. So while designing the dairy plan, some of the important aspects should be taken care of related to electricity requirement like electrical load calculation and connection. So we should calculate the total electricity requirement depending on the different kind of machineries and their power requirement. Similarly, equipment selection that is of 220 volt single phase and 440 volt three phase. This is the power requirement based on which we should calculate the total power required. Then generation or procurement of connection. So either we are going to have our own generation of power or procurement has to be decided. And then we should have standby diesel operated generator which will work instantly when there is a power failure. So all these points should be taken care of while designing the dairy plant. So one of the most another important requirements in the utility is the water. Water is very very important for different aspect in the dairy plant like cleaning of different uh, cans, machineries, floors, etc. and washing of the machineries. Then soft water is required for the boiler. Then portable water for all the other places where the processing is to be done, product processing. Then chilled water is required for different part in the machineries for cooling purposes and also hot water is required. So these are different important requirements in the dairy plant, different kind of water and water plays very important role in this dairy plant and processing. So water supply as I mentioned very important. The water supply for a dairy plant is important and must be considered at planning stage. An adequate supply of good quality water for washing of equipment and cooling purpose is essential. Within the corporation limits of cities and towns, the best water supply for a dairy plant is the water from municipal water works. So these are important things to be understood for the utility services and facilities for a dairy plant. In continuation about water supply, refrigeration machinery requires about 9 liters per minute per ton of refrigeration capacity. Single stage condensing pans require about 20 to 30 liters of water per liter of water evaporated. So this is for the evaporating chambers or we call vacuum pans. Then double effects evaporator requires approximately 5.6 liters of water per liter of water evaporated. Then in addition, water is needed for washing equipments. That is about 90 to 225 liters of water 
per 450 liters of milk handle that is for liquid milk processing and for supplying the boiler there also we need a lot of water so that has to be calculated so refrigeration system this is another most important utility requirements or machineries as you know briefly i will mention a refrigeration system has certain important components like evaporator accumulator compressor and condenser so here is a schematic diagram you know there is a refrigerant a, a, a kind of refrigerant gas and liquid it goes through continuously as a gas and liquid through which it extracts the heat from the chamber or it can be from the room so refrigeration system of different aspect we are going to discuss next which is very very important utility requirements for the dairy plant so here is some few details about the cold storage requirement consideration has to be given at the planning stage to make provision for storage of processed milk and other dairy products cold store of 2 to 4 degrees celsius is mainly required for overnight storage of pasteurized milk yogurt soft cheese or short time storage of butter storage capacity should be equivalent to production capacity of one to two days so what is the production capacity the storage capacity mostly should be almost double of that that is how we need to design the size of the cold storage here we can see the pictures of different kind of cold storage it can be refrigerator it can be deep freezer that is minus 20 degrees celsius generally it can be a walk-in cooler which can be again at a refrigeration temperature or freezer temperature both that is a bigger size where we can carry the things directly inside that is walk-in cooler or in general cold storage means it can be a room complete room which can be of refrigeration temperature or freezer temperature here we will talk about the frozen storage so when we say cold storage sometimes it means both refrigeration that is 0 to 5 degrees celsius or frozen storage below uh, minus 10 or minus 20 degrees celsius so in the cold store where we keep minus that is frozen storage cold stores of minus 20 to minus 30 degrees celsius is required for long term butter storage and for ice cream hardening and storage here the storage period for such products in dairy plant is an important accordingly the storage capacity should be decided but other kind of products like sterilized milk milk powder evaporated or condensed milk generally stored in ambient temperature so there we need only the relative humidity should be within the limit here we can see some of the machineries for ice cream freezer as we are going to discuss all these things later so we need ice cream freezer sometime it is batch type or continuous type but all these machineries need the similar mechanism or the refrigeration system behind for their working so they work under the uh, under the mechanism of the refrigerant so that needs separate backup facilities that is coming under the utility services here we are seeing a picture of a boiler modern type so boiler is very very important for production of steam and supplying to different part of the dairy plant in case of dairy plant steam is extremely important for different purpose especially for heating and processing of dairy products or heating of milk for pasteurization so few more details we are going to see in the next here we will discuss little more about the boilers boilers in old days are generally operated with the fuels like diesel and all so they are not very efficient then there is electrically operated boiler so these boilers basically can be two types that is the water tube and fire tube in case of water tube that is the water is inside the tube and fire is outside for heating this and that produces the steam and that is used for different purpose in the dairy plant whereas in case of fire tube the fire is inside the tube 
and the water is outside so these fire tubes are inside the water so that water get heated and then it produces steam which is used in the dairy plant here we can see the cut section of a modern boiler it has got different aspects which uh, is taught in details for the dairy engineering courses so just for a basic understanding we can see that there are different parts and sections within the boiler in a modern boiler where it efficiently produces the steam which is very economic and sustainable for the use in the dairy plant here we can see some of the major equipments where steam is required in the left side you can see that is the plate heat exchanger that is in htst pasteurizer htst pasteurizer needs steam or hot water for heating the milk and for the pasteurization process at the middle you can see the vacuum pan or vacuum evaporator where the steam is supplied for evaporation of milk and for concentration of milk and in the bottom right you can see that is a spray drying machine where the steam is used for heating the air and that hot air is used for making the spray dried milk powder in addition the steam is required in case of all kind of double jacketed vats so where we make the paneer or the khoa even for making ghee all such places we need the steam supply as a source of energy for heating here one important safety requirements that is the color coding of pipelines in the dairy plant there are different kind of pipelines which carries different kind of liquids or other agents and they are having different degree of nature of risk or safety so number one all the safe products the pipeline which carries all the safe products like air or water they will have green color the pipelines which carries the dangerous material like ammonia fuel oils high pressure steam etc they will be yellow color then all the protective material piped through the plant to minimize hazards of dangerous material they will have blue color and the fire control equipment related to fire control or fire extinguisher all such pipe will have red color so this is a clear indication for understanding that which pipeline is carrying what and that is very important for safety purpose of the dairy plant here is one more important utility requirements that is compressed air compressed air is required in different areas or different kind of machineries for their operation like air supply to various components of machine then pneumatic conveying so there are conveyors which operates with the pneumatic operations and then cooling or temperature control of machine parts so different parts of the machine needs cooling through the air and then mixing with other fluids to aid process that is example of two fluid nozzle so there are many other such places where air is required for the operations so now about ventilation in any industrial building the ventilation is very very important here in case of dairy plant also ventilation plays very important role so there are different kind of options for maintaining the ventilation in different rooms or sections or processing areas because of the use of steam in different areas there will be condensation of steam and that causes lot of humidity issues so that's why the ventilation is required to remove all such condensations so you can see here different kind of machineries or instruments like ordinary exhaust fan then industrial exhaust fan even we can see without wind spin turbine roof ventilators and then we can see with wind spin turbine roof ventilators so these all kind of devices can remove the accumulation of hot air or steam and make the atmosphere comfortable for the workers and for the machineries and also for the buildings this is another important aspect that is the fly control or insect control devices in dairy plants since we are going to process the food with fat protein with lot of smell and odor 
automatically it will attract all kinds of pests or flies and insects so there should be proper measures to control their entry and their nuisance so there are always two options like some places there will be insectocutor or fly catcher with uv radiation so this uv radiation will attract the flies and catch and kill them and in many places in the entry of the rooms there will be positive air pressure so this positive air pressure will not allow these insects to come inside so there are many such devices for controlling this kind of nuisance so now we are at the end of today's lecture in this second part of the dairy plant in the first part basically we have discussed about the design layout and some of the location and other things in today's second part we have discussed briefly about the floors and walls and the sanitary aspect for different equipments and later we have discussed basically some of the important uh, equipments for dairy processing both for liquid milk processing and for milk product processing especially we have discussed about the requirement for a small dairy plant in details and their capacity requirements and in the second part of this lecture we have discussed about the utility services and requirements especially the requirement of electricity water steam and other aspects cold storage and all these things so this is uh, completing the second part of the dairy plant particularly related to design and requirements of equipments and other utility machineries thank you if you like please indicate and please share and subscribe this channel thank you